Hello, hello, and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming my July wrap up, which I waited to film a bit because I wanted to try to finish my Fairy Loot vlog before to see if I could post that before. But now it's been so long that I might as well just do the wrap up. I feel like it is a spoiler for the vlog, but then I realized the same people probably won't watch both or something. And I read 51 books in July, which is a bit funny because I read 51 exactly in June as well. So not on purpose, it just kind of happened. A bit less, you know, than those a bit in the same months before that, like uh, May and April, but still quite a lot. And I don't have a lot of thoughts on a lot of this, so hopefully we'll go fast. And um, without further ado, let's talk about the books I read in July. So first we have I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Fumino. This is volume, I think it's six. It's number one of four seasons and I had read through like all of them in June and then wanted to like complete them in July. Then I actually got the newest volume, I think volume seven in July that was released like in the beginning of the month and I didn't read that throughout the whole month. I was like, will I read this now or will I wait for Manga Nights? And I didn't read it. But yeah, it just followed these two boys. One of them is Steph and they fall in love and then they have lots of communication problems but also really really sweet moments as well. I enjoy this one a lot and I should have honestly just read William 7 since I just got it but I didn't so I shall remedy that hopefully soon when there's another manga night. I then read Woven in Moonlight by Isabel Ibanez. This one was really weird and I feel like a girl who is on one side of this revolution that is happening in her country and then it like she realizes it's the revolution is wrong or something and starts like supporting the people that have like taken over her country if that is what I remember and the book in general was just uh, criticized for being very typical and racist towards like the people who live there because this is like based on an actual like civil war like invasion colonialism that happened in the name of the country in this instance, but like over in South America. So yeah, but overall I just didn't like it just because even not knowing that, I just didn't like it because it was just an, an interesting story. <laughs> I didn't care for the main character. I didn't care for like this revolution. And honestly, I'm not gonna talk that long about these books because obviously I do talk about my thoughts in the favorite vlog, but I think I gave it a two stars. Then I read the Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller, which is obviously the first one in this trilogy. Um, maybe we'll come more. So this one is about a girl who is gonna marry the Shadow King to kill him and get his power because she wants to have power for herself after basically being told all her life she needs to get married and like being sold off basically. And then she falls in love with him instead, you can imagine. And then it's just like about her like being dark and like yeah, power hungry and how can she have both and then it plays out. It is very enjoyable. I liked how a main character was really interested in clothes. I guess like the one part I disliked about it was that I could very much predict how the story was going to go always and like very much predict like what was actually going on. It made the story a bit boring and I didn't think it was like incredible. It's still like very entertaining for comparing it to all the other favorite books I read. I don't remember my rating. I feel like I gave it a two when I read it, which was very harsh. I feel like it deserves a three considering how much more positive I have felt towards it after finishing it. Then I read The Queen of Cursed Things by SM Gaither. This one was on audio and it was the Girl Machine pick for July or was it June? I think it was June because it was leftover. Yes, because I didn't get to complete audio before the month ended. And this one follows this girl who has like serpent powers and she didn't know. And then they have found out and then they need to walk against the king and blah, 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 blah. And I just didn't kind of care. I just found it very uninteresting. Again, it's just very much like the same stuff I read before. Like you would see a pattern here in this video in general and I just was generally very bored and I didn't like it. So I gave it two stars. Um, this is obviously not for Fairy Love Vlog, but it blended well together with all those other Fairy Love books. I feel like I sound very negative in general right now, but I just been reading an overabundance of a certain kind of genre and I feel like I've gone into hell and I can't get out because it's just like, there's no substance for me and I'm dying. But Yay. <laughs> I say, as I am going to talk about like one I actually really enjoyed, which was Bone Cries Moon by Catherine Purdy. Purdy? Purdy? 
I'm unsure. Um, this one follows this kind of clan that lives in secret out in the forest, and they need to make this kill a very so so many years when they come off age, and also make a child, perhaps. So, like, they kind of find a soulmate and then kill them. And then two of our characters is going to do this, where we also follow the point of view of this dude who has been hunting them all his life because they killed his father in front of him. Then just things play out. I really enjoy, like, that we have three point of views and just how our characters, like, uh, I was going to say, changed each other and fell for each other and how I couldn't predict it. I kept thinking this is going to happen and that didn't happen. I kept thinking this is going to happen and that didn't happen. And it was just like so fun to not being able to predict the story. I really liked the originality of it. Like the concept for me was fun and the plot twist that came out in the end was so good. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm so excited to read the second book, which I am going to read hopefully this year. So really much enjoyable. I gave it four out of five stars. Again, I could talk more about it, but more thoughts in the February vlog whenever that comes out. Then I read Bungo Stray Dogs Volume 21 by Kafka Saguri and Sanga Harukua. This one follows this detective agency that does these cases and they have different abilities. And we are in the middle of this arc, which I feel like now is that every time I read this, a volume but like we're in the middle of this little long ass arc and I just want to get out but I feel like it's playing out interestingly I just miss our main characters because we are focusing a lot of side characters that I don't care much for but still fun then I read Incendiary in Sandiary in Cinderary I am not sure by Sorida Cordova what was this one about I do believe it was like a girl who had been kidnapped from like the nobles and then she's been growing up with the rebels and then she kind of is taken back to the nobles again and needs to pretend she's on their side even though she her heart is with the rebels and then maybe that will change because she realizes stuff and then someone died that she really cared for and then she wants revenge <laughs> so i don't know care there was a fun plot twist in the end but i didn't care i might continue i don't know but i do believe i gave it two stars apparently i didn't care about a lot of things in life like the next one we have shielded by kaylin flanders so this one we have this girl and she's gonna go off to get married i'm laughing because there's so that's the plot of everything apparently and then she doesn't want to get married and then a war happens and um i was supposed to care but i was just like get me out of here i'm so sorry i do believe i gave that too as well or one, who knows, actually. And then I have 1793 by Nicholas Not of Dog, which is a really cool last name, which is Night and Day. And this is a Swedish crime novel, but like historical crime. So it's like back in time in Sweden. I thought that was a really interesting setting. We have a murder case, which we are investigating. Normally don't like these kinds of books at all, but I did find this interesting in the setting and the way it was written. I did feel like I was missing a piece of the story at the point. Um, I don't remember what it was, but it was like, enjoyable-ish and a nice genre change. I had it borrowed at the library, which is why I had to read it because it was expiring. And I gave it three out of five, I believe. I was gonna say I have no recollection of reading this, but I apparently read Witch Hat Atelier Volume 4 by Komona Shirahama. When did I read this? I don't remember. But this one follows a young girl who can find out she can do magic, or not finds out, but she finds out how people do magic and now is in magic school and then we do different magic stuff and it's very really sweet and I'm really enjoying it. I was a bit like mm, and now I'm a bit like ooh so I'm very excited to see if I will feel ooh for the fifth volume. I then read Star Daughter by Shifta Takrar. This one follows a girl who is the daughter of a star. Her father had an affair with a star and then she has star powers and then she's like trying to hide this all her life and then she wants this to get out and then she enters this magical world and then there's this weird magical tournament which i didn't really get and that is kind of the story and she meets a dude who hunts stars was that it i struggle i struggle with the tone it felt very young and it, 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 i wanted to care about the concept because it was cool and like the influences of like Indian mythology, myths, um, etc. But I just kind of didn't care for like the story itself. It was very not interesting. And I think I give it two as well. Yay. My average rating for the last few months, by the way. Don't want to talk about it. Then I read Which is Good Comet Maneske, which means like If It Should Arrive a Human by Thomas Kosko, which is a Danish book, but I read it in Norwegian from the library. This is very, very hyped and popular, and it basically just is about this young Danish boy who grows up and is poor, basically. I do believe it's also gay, because there's subtlety in, in that. Uh, I don't I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it was it was sad. It was interesting. I felt for the main character. It was a fast 
uh, Punch and Read is very, very like typical Lorde kind of like what's it called like contemporary literature in a way. It reminded me a bit of this other famous Norwegian author called Knausko who writes about himself. Not that I know if this is based on himself but like that's the impression like tone of the story was very much similar to that. I did enjoy it but I didn't love it. Like I don't find it the oh my god most amazing book ever but I do believe that that's also because the genre is not me. So I gave it four, not four, three, four. I, I honestly don't know. But I am going to complete the trilogy because I do want to see where this character ends up because this was very much focused when I was very young. So like a teen. So I wonder if we could go into like adulthood. I don't know. Then I read Lore by Alexander Bracken. I actually have this. Why I, I, I forget which one I have physically or not at this point. Lore by Alexander Bracken. This is going to be on hold. This is about grief mythology. We have... I don't even know how to explain it, but they're like, the gods, the Olympic gods have been dying, and then we're trying to find out who did it, and then she answers this alliance with, uh, what's she called again? Athena, and then he's playing out. This is my face, I did not care. Oh my god, it was just so bad. And the plot twist would not plot with thing, and I wanted to not read it anymore. I do believe I gave this one a one star, um... I don't want to think about it, but here we are. And um, then I read Oshinoko Volume 5 by Akaka Saka Nango Yakuyari. This one follows this doctor who treats this patient who is pregnant, who is a young pop star, and where shit happens. I don't know how to explain it. The beginning was so good, one of the best beginnings I ever read. And I'm just miraculously, superficially, if that is even a word I can use in this situation, Bored, you just like commentary on like the pop industry and like being a celebrity and I just like my face don't care because I just want to know about this kind of murder mystery we have and we just don't do that at all and it's very sad and disappointing and boring. Then I read Diavola by Jennifer Thorne which I borrowed in the library and this is like a girl who sees ghosts, there's ghosts, I don't even know because I Again, didn't care, and I was very bored, and it was just not it. It was not the kind of horror that I thought think is for me, so I gave it like a two or one, I don't know, but I didn't enjoy myself. I read This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. I would admit, I have no recollection in this moment what this book was about. It has disappeared from my mind, blended in with everything else I've been reading. It's kind of embarrassing, honestly. Okay, so I read a synopsis, and we are a girl who's gonna go out and find her brother, and she meets this other dude, and they own a ship. I remember now. And I didn't care, apparently. So I gave it one star. <laughs> we have this called Alchemist by Kali Lee Baker. This one I listened to audiobook, and like, from like the bottom of the favorite list, and meaning in the middle. And oh my god, this one was actually really fun. We have her on Alchemist, and she has the ability to bring people back from life, while like you're not supposed to, she does it anyway. Then she wants to be a royal alchemist, to get well money for her family etc and she goes out with her two cousins to do this there's trials there is drama with the prince there is like monsters there is a lot of like alchemist stuff where you start questioning who's alive or not and it is very fun it was just so interesting the way this was done so interesting the way that how the book ended i'm so excited for the next one i could not predict this. I really like the concepts. I like how dark and gritty it became in different aspects. And I gave it a four out of five stars. But I want the nice favorite cover, which apparently is not possible. <laughs> I read my Purple Santa novel, which is like a short, short, short book with like 30 pages by Ian McEwen, which my co-worker told me to read in a shift once. And it's just basically about this author who steals another author's book. And then he gets away with it, basically. And that is it. It's, it was just the way he did it. it. was interesting to read. I gave it... I don't know if I read it like a tree. It was okay, well written, but... It was literally like a pamphlet. So yeah. But I still count it as a book, because it was on Goodreads as a book, so I'm doing it. I then read The Trouble with Peace by Joel Embercrombie. Which is... Oh, all the books are falling. All the books are falling! No! Stop! Oh my god. Which is the second book in the last First Law trilogy, which I read for Catch Up Book Club. Um, in this one, we have different characters, wars brewing or conflict is brewing, at least between them. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if I can, but we're in the fantasy world and there's different parts that is moving. And we are reading the third book very soon, like very soon. I need to read it next week. 
or the week after. So yeah, I actually enjoy this more than other books in the series. I'm enjoying this last trilogy more in general. I'm gonna give that one a three, I believe. Then I read Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle, which I read as a buddy read in my Patreon. And I didn't really like it. We have this girl who was growing up like we were close to a conversion camp. Fantastic she might have gone there. And then um, monsters are brewing, and then um, we are revolutioning a bit in a very short book. And I just kinda did not care. Obviously ruined that conversion camp and all that, but just that story and the way it played out, the way it was written, I just it didn't match with me. So I feel like I gave it a two. Then I read The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rikowski. This is another one I'm a bit like, what happened in this one? Right. I do believe this like we are on like, it's very icy and we are traveling. Yes, we are like in a mountain and we're gonna travel. We are just freezing and in the cold. I like, I like the atmosphere of the story and I do believe there was like one funny-ish plot twist, but guess what? I didn't care and I do believe I gave it too. Then I read The Darkness Within Us by Tricia Lemonsaller. I didn't actually believe at the point that I was going to read this for the February vlog because it was releasing like in July and then um, I used so long I could listen to the audiobook. And this one is like this sequel with following the sister to the other main character in The Darkness Outside Us and she is finally free after the old dude she married died. Then this other dude shows up and says that he is his son and it's gonna take everything that she worked hard for away from her. There's Darkness Brewing in this one too. Secrets. I really, really like their bickering and I really like the atmosphere and a bit like what is gonna happen and how is it gonna play out. And I really, really enjoyed this one. I do believe I enjoyed this more than the first one, but it also have maybe to do with the fact that I listened to the audiobook on this one. So I was very immersed in the story because the narrator was really good while the first one I let read with my eyes. So I didn't get that complete immersiveness in the same way because the tone of the narrator made the character feel very much alive and like when they had like the bickering it just felt really good but oh well like I guess I'll maybe like the plot more in this one as well and I do believe I gave it a four because it was very fun and enjoyable. I read The Asian Magus Bride volume six by Kori Yamasaki. This one follows Chisa who is sold to Elias and then She's basically, I mean, she's sold, but she's basically free to explore her magic inside of her and get a home for the first time. And it's very sweet and a bit weird. And now I've finally done my reread on. I have read the sex first volume before, but the seventh now that I have will be the first one I haven't read before. Yay. I read The Prison Healer by Lenat Nori. This was the part where apparently I read some that I really enjoyed because... This one, we have a prison healer. She's in prison, she's a healer. She has been told for like years that they will come and save her, but I haven't come yet. And then um, we're just waiting, waiting, waiting. And then, um, I mean, it can feel a bit repetitive. We are locked in this one place, but we meet other players and characters that uh, fulfill the story a bit. And then she enters this trial to try to save this person. And the trials are insane. Like what was going on there? But it was so much fun. I really enjoyed the main character. I really enjoyed being able again to guess what's gonna happen next. And the plot was in the end. I was like, what? It was so stupid, but they worked. And now I need to read the next one. Like I, I did not expect myself to see myself to enjoy this at all, but it was just very fun and entertaining. I was very invested. Now I am super invested in the characters because we got them to know them so well in this place. And I'm, as I said, very curious to see how it will play out. So I'm getting goosebumps actually thinking about the ending because this is one thing that happened like on the second to last page where we were just like, wait, 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 what? And then it just plays out so well. Because mm. then it just all makes sense. It just all makes sense. And it's just... Apparently the goosebumps were coming out today. This one I very much enjoyed and I'm very excited when I'm done with this vlog and done with some other things that I've been putting off that I can just read some of these sequels that I'm very excited for. Then I read My Hero Academia by Kohei Horikoshi, volume 36. So we are in this fight and then I thought this really sad and uh, traumatizing thing would happen, but apparently it doesn't. So I'm good. And now I can continue. I really, I'm looking over to My Hero Academia on my shelf right now and it's like almost filling an entire shelf on its own. I could double stack it soon, but yeah, I do believe we are closer to the last arc. I have no idea, but like obviously the English releases are like a year behind from the Japanese one, so who knows when it will end. Then I read Which is Steeped in Gold by Cinnamon Smart. This one I'm most excited for as I own it, but I didn't care. We have one character who has been in her cell and another character who it's like privileged and rich and I need to work together. I just couldn't grasp the story. I just 
couldn't care for it. And I'm sad because I thought I would really enjoy it. This is the one I might give another chance later just because I feel overstimulated and I might feel better about it later when I'm not, but I'm not sure yet. So I do really have a year like that too, I'm sorry. Then I read Us West Passagen by Ingvild Chastain, which is a Norwegian book, which means like the East West Passage or Passenger, I guess, which is basically about this young Norwegian woman living in Japan. And then she just studied Japanese and is there and everyone's like, why are you in Japan? And she's just like chilling, living her life. And then she's from like this very out in the country place in Norway. And I guess I could just relate a bit to the story because I was also living in Japan, but obviously just like not permanently, but just for an exchange year. But it was just fun to see like a Norwegian in Japan and like in like Norwegian literature. It was very interesting for me to read. I could relate to it in a different way, the way she describes Japan. I can see it really clearly in my head. And I found that the book was very enjoyable and thoughtful and interesting, at least like the perspective and the way it was written. I really enjoyed it. I do believe I gave it like a 3.5, but I could round it up to 4 probably since I have like very positive feelings now that it's been a little while since I read it. Then I read Run Among Crows by Victoria Roth and this one is like a short story from the author and we are just like... It was kind of like a cool concept, but now I can't describe it or like remember exactly what it was. I just didn't completely fall for it. It was written really well and the atmosphere was good, but... I just, the characters, and like the plot itself, I just was like, eh. So I do believe I like gave it a three, and now I can't apparently not recall properly what it was. So I don't know what that says. And it's Orange to You There One by Ichigo Takano. This one is the last official like orange volume in the manga series. And this one we have more from Kakuru's point of view. It was very, very sweet. And I am glad I finished like the whole series. I just didn't know as I mentioned maybe before that. There was more volumes after like the two big ones, but I read them and I really, really like the characters in this one. Like I feel like every character in the friend group gave a lot to the story, while like normally in a friend group I like don't care about half of them, but this one does the friend group really, really very well. So I enjoyed that a lot. Then we have Fire with Fire by Destiny Sora. This is another one where I'm like, what happened in this one? I'm gonna search it up. Fire with fire. Clearly, I didn't care about it because I can't remember it. Oh my god, why is it not showing up? Here. Uh, this is the revolution one because honestly, everyone is a revolution one. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh my god, I remember now. I just had to read the first sentence of the synopsis. So, we are like in our world and they've been hunting dragons all their life. And just the way the tone of like the voices of the characters was just like, I'm gonna squeeze them out. I'm sorry, that was very violent, but like, yeah. And then Mr. Dragon is like, oh my god, but he was kind of nice. And then she wants to save the dragon, even though they're dragon hunters. And but just the way it was just like written as like a, I don't even know how to describe it, like silly YA, I was going to say shit book, but that sounds really mean. The way it was written just didn't make me take the series book series at all. I knew for the first page, the first sentence I read, I was just like, what the heck is this shit? And I just knew I was not gonna like it and I didn't. It was really bad for me. Cool with Dragon Hunters, but nothing about this book worked for me. Then we have The Forest Grim by Catherine Prudy, which is, as you know, the, the same author as The Bone Crowner's Moon. So I was a bit excited for this because I read The Bone Crowner's Moon and I really enjoyed it. But this one was not, not, not for me. We are like in this village that is surrounded by this forest. And then every year they've been able to make a wish to this book. And then one day the book has disappeared and there's been a murder and we don't know who murdered. And then her mother disappeared into the forest and she's been always wanting to go and save her mother in the forest. But then you need to be chosen out to go in there because everyone who has gone in there has disappeared and they don't know what happened to them. But then one day she just goes in anyway with this dude. And then we just go around in the forest for like 400 pages and just like, do nothing. We are confused. We meet some people that is trying to kill them and we're trying to find the answers to what happened. We do get the answers, but not really. Like, like it concludes as if it's finished, but like there's so many things the book didn't answer. And then there's a sequel coming. And that annoyed me <laughs> so much. And like the narrator for this one, because I listened to this one on audiobook, did not work for me. And I'm sad because like I feel like maybe if I read it first, I will really enjoy it more, but I don't think so because I didn't really enjoy the story. We were just, as I said, just walking. And this is why one of the reasons why I'm gonna try to stop to buy all the books by not just because I enjoyed one. Because I would buy Bone Crown's Moon if the next one is as good, but I'm not gonna buy this one. Oh, but it, it really annoyed me. And I gave it a two because. <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. 
I'm gonna move on. We had Haunting of Tram Car 015 by PJ Clark. This one was the gum machine pick for July. And it was just like a short story in the Jin world, Jin universe by the author. Very much enjoyable. We saw me this haunted case and I really, really liked it. I really, really liked the writing, the characters, the world, everything. So I gave it a strong four. Then we have these Hollow Wows by Lexi Ryan. And this one we have Faye. We have a main character whose sister has been kidnapped. She needs to save her. And then she enters this deal or not. I mean, later, maybe a deal, but like she is going into like the fairy court and it's going between the two different courts trying to find her and stealing this thing for this other dude. And I just kind of did not care at all. I just like the way it was written that again, the tone and maturity of a main character just kind of ruined the story for me. And then she does all of this to save her sister because she cares so much for her. And then she just abandons her. I'm sorry. Is that a spoiler? I'm sorry. And I'm just like, okay, so two stars. Or one star. I don't remember at this point. I then read The Fight and Night by Bridget Cameron Horror, my uh, Arkham Nemesis. <laughs> oh, she ruined. <laughs> I cursed the dark and lonely. And this one was some kind of revolution thing and I didn't care for a single moment and I gave it one star and that's all I got to say. <laughs> we have done The Night Eaters by Majority Liu and Santa Keda. This is a new graphic novel series by the same authors as Monstrous. And this one, we have these two kids and their parents, and they find out secrets about their parents, or her mo their mother at least, and what she really is. And it was dark, and a bit, not like scary scary, but a bit like really like some intense photos and drawings, I guess. And it was just, it was a good time. I was like, dang, this is good and fun and interesting. And I want to see what how it plays out. So yeah, I do already know that the author is going to be stunning and the story was going to be special. And it truly was. So I'm very excited to see how it play out. It is only going to be a trilogy and I do have the second one. I don't think the third one is out yet, but I'm glad like it's not going to be, you know, 140 volumes long because it also is enjoyable to just read one condensed story in graphic format sometimes as well. Then I read Our Share of Nights by Maria Enriquez. This one was able to read with my fan Johanna and I don't really know what this is about. I found it hard to explain but we have this son and his father on the run. The mother has died and then we don't really know where they're running from but they can have the abilities to see ghosts and then we see them grow up a bit and we have some flashbacks and like some movies do come out of this but I can't really say it because like spoiler and there were some point of views I didn't really get so I don't think I completely got everything in this book but it's very special it was interesting the way it was written and it had some interesting aspects and it had some interesting aspects but I didn't like love it so I think I gave it a three. Then I read J. Father Gold by uh, I was about to say by her destiny. <laughs> But you see Altan and this one we have oh, what was it again? We have this young girl who lives out in the countryside with this old lady and then does she discover she has powers? No past, no family. And then we have the lost heir who was like going around because like they lost the kingdom and they need to work together. She Yes, she has powers, and then they go together to, like, get back to kingdom or whatever. He's the lost prince because I do believe they think he's dead. Yes. And it was, like, apparently, I just knew this because I want to check out reviews when I'm finishing it, but apparently it was pitched as, like, Atana and uh, Suko. Is that their names? <laughs> Is it Suko? Or Soro? I'm having a moment from Outside the Lost Airbender. I'm like, everyone like, oh my god, there was their romance, but apparently people said it was not as good. There's a long time since I watched Outside the Lost Airbender, so I honestly don't know. It had some interesting aspects, but then I didn't get the ending because it's it set up as if there was more, but there was only, it's not standalone, so I didn't, I didn't understand the ending, honestly. I didn't, didn't love it. I do believe I gave it a two. The beginning had a really interesting setup, but then it just became very uninteresting as the story played out. Then I read A Leave I Ranisma, Dogbook, Optimism Om Not Narcissma by Sumaya Jinda Ali. So that means like a life in a, um, what's it called? Like a life west. That is what it's called in English. A life in a life west, like diary entries about Norwegian racism. And that is exactly what it is. She writes about living in Norway and living in a lower way of her life and writing about how it is to well not be white and the stuff around it and the things she has experienced. It was absolutely terrible. Broke my heart a bit, could relate a bit and just I'm very impressed that being able to put words on those kind of feelings and that kind of trauma. I've just been reading, I guess, like over the last two years, like a bit more about people experiencing Norwegian racism or 
Norwegian racism is not like it's different from other places, but you might know it does differ a bit still. Uh, people living in Norway experiencing racism is what I was trying to say. And it's just breaks my heart, but I think it's very important and interesting to read about, especially now that it's been much more talked about and much more books about it compared to a few years ago. I really, really thought it was a great book. I thought the way it was written, the way it broke my heart, the way I wanted to read more about it. Um, yeah, I thought it was really interesting and I gave it a five because I honestly thought that that is what it deserved and I do debate buying myself a copy because I did borrow this one at the library. We then have Monster Perfect Edition Volume 2 by Naoki Urasawa. So I do enjoy the story still. This is a like doctor who's hunting after this killer and I do enjoy it because like I want to see this case come to close. I want to see how it will end. But they had the plot twist of the killer. I'm just saying it. Having DID and then one of the parts is like a serial killer which is a very very overused trope that has been talked about a lot about being very generally bad and giving people the idea just generally a bad well, feelings i was going to say feeling shit ableism you know and i do realize that this is released a few years ago still like in the 80s 70s i don't remember so like i will have that in mind as well but that doesn't mean i need to like it as a plot twist and used as a device for the story that did turn me off of it but i am gonna read it still I guess. Great Year of the Reaper by Makia Lucier. This one had a really cool cover, but a very uninteresting story that I apparently can't remember right now either. Because I'm mixing it up with the other one with a cool cover. Oh, I remember, I remember. We have a main character and he had been in prison for a really long time after like a lot of people died to this plague. And then he's now returned and I was like, oh my God, you're back. And we all thought you were dead. And then more stuff happens like at home with like politics stuff. I did remember when, I just need to read like a bit of the synopsis sometimes. Didn't really care. I don't remember if I gave it two or a three. Then we have only a monster by Vanessa Lan, which I ended up enjoying a bit. We have a main character who can travel in time, but to travel in time, she needs to take like life force from other people so like she could take life force from me and i will for example die one day earlier than i was supposed to there is this person hunting them uh people who can do this and then she needs to hide in time and it was just very interesting i really liked how time was used i enjoyed our main character she is trying to reverse this but basically massacre of a family and then we have timely wily stuff we have a bit of romance we have other traumatic more stuff happening. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a bit different from the other ones here. I don't remember if I gave it a four, but definitely like a tree. And at this point, a tree is like a crown jewel in the sea of shit. <laughs> I don't think that is a real alleg allegory. Is that what it's called? But you got what I meant. Then we have Blood Sky by the De Deborah Falei. And this one is a young girl who has these certain kind of powers and they're hunted. She's, just, she's been hiding it all her life. But then she is drafted or she volunteers into this army who's been fighting these people. There's been a war going on for a long time. And her powers might soon be revealed. Trauma happens very early in the book for a main character where the best friend kind of dies. And then we are just like, oh, and then we kind of just don't care and move on. The way it was written, the tone it was written in, it's just so YA fantasy that I can't like really describe it unless you know what I mean. And it just made me like not care for the story and just the way things went out, the way I was supposed to care for like the plot and happenings and the emotional turmoil of our main character just didn't have that suspense or the ability to make me care and i wanted to because i do think that some aspects of this was interesting but just that like again the tone of the story just completely like pulled me out of it and i just couldn't grasp my head around it and i gave it a two but i might try again later i might not who knows i read middle of the night by riley sager for this brother read thing and this one i listened to the audiobook for and this one is riley sager's newest and we have these two boys that used to be best friends because one of them disappeared when they were a kid tenting tenting sleeping in a tent outside in the yard and then we have like 30 years later we're still haunted by this disappearance and is still trying and thinking to find out I and mean, he's going back home or is back home after all these years and now he thinks he can solve it now basically the answer to this was a bit like are you serious and then other parts i feel like i did a lot of misdirection which is fine because obviously you don't want to give it away to the reader but then it made me not be able to believe the story like that they could solve it all those years ago that they didn't talk to people properly i was just like what 
it just did make sense to me, which annoyed me, and I ended up giving like a 2.5. However, I want to add that the atmosphere on the main character was very much enjoyable to follow. I really liked the voice of the narrator. I really liked our main character as a person, and like the plot is that came to his character were great, but like the mystery itself was meh. I read To Your Eternity Volume 8 by Yoshitoki Oima, which I I'm enjoying much more now. We had a little like bleh, area, but now we are back in business and we follow this orb that can change into other thing that has died around them. And then we are in this weird storyline right now, which is very interesting. And I'm very curious to see like, because I know I'm on volume eight, but I also know it's like over 20 volumes. Like what is gonna happen in all these volumes? I don't know, but I do believe it's gonna be a ride. Then I have Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, which I enjoyed so much that I went out and bought it instantly after reading it. I bought it at the library initially. And oh my God, was this book good. This is just a romance. We have a doctor, like high tier doctor, super clever, privileged family woman. And then we have this dude who just owns a B&B and is from the small town and they're from different worlds, which is why it's called part of your world. And how can those parts of their worlds come together for them to be together? And you need to really to find out because honestly, their problems were very realistic. The way they talk to each other, the way Daniel stole my heart, the way they work together, the way they loved each other. I loved it. It was so good. It is one of the best things I've read in a long while. And again, I borrowed it at the library, so I kind of just had to read it because it was expiring. And there's a long ass wait list on it. But it was just so good. It made me want to instantly read the next one in the series, which I have also maybe gotten. And I just, it was just so good. I haven't read things that made me feel this much in a long time. And I gave it a five because that's what it served for what it did to me. <laughs> then I read If I Have to Be Haunted by Miranda's Son, which was another one that I listened to audiobook on. And you have a main character who can see and communicate with ghosts, which is apparently a pattern as well. And she has been able to do this for a long time, but like her mother's always told her not to. But then a uh, dude that she really, really doesn't like, they are kind of like a bit enemies, um, dies and she's gonna help him maybe come back to life in a way. I mean, he's not 100% dead, but like 99% dead. And his ghost is after her and I need to work together and I might fall in love, who knows? And it was honestly like such a fun beginning. I love the voices. I love like the story, how it was building. When we were on this quest story, I lost a bit of interest because it was just like a lot of walking in fog and a lot of like, oh my God, this happened, but it didn't happen and stuff like that that I personally don't enjoy. So it was a bit like swiveling around, but like less so than in The Forest Grim, but a bit like remind me of The Forest Grim. But still enjoyable overall. I like the character development for the characters. I like to see how this story is going to play out. And I gave it like a three, I believe, because I do believe that it's not a four. Again, three is a drool in the, at this point. Then I read Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. Again, by the library. I mean, most of these I did, as you can maybe tell. And I thought this was going to be a cute romance. I was wearing a mood for a cute, nice romance. And I just absolutely hated it. I just hated the tone of the story. I hated how it was written. It was just so annoying. And I just didn't care. She likes movies a lot. And she wants to experience her life as a rom-com in a way. And I didn't care. And the love interest was blah, and the whole story for me was blah. I don't think that I was the target audience for this. But I've seen everyone love it. Even other people, like, I don't know. I give it a one star. Then I read this, which is Grace by Emily Tide. And this one, I do believe, is the one where she's been married many times. And she has this ability to touch people. And then they die, but she's supposed to not... They're not supposed to not die if they're in love or something. And then I think, like, the whole place they're at is about to... They're about to all die. But then she needs to get married for that to be stopped. But then they keep dying. I didn't care. <laughs> I do believe that was what was happening. I gave it a one star, I do believe. I don't even know. Two, one, I don't know. The concept was cool, but nothing about the execution was interesting for me. Then I read Marshall by Hajime Komoto, which is volume two. And I did enjoy volume one. I thought it was so funny. But this one, I know his thing is to punch people instead of using magic. They use magic and he managed to just punch, punch them, which is funny but like when you read a 200 page manga where the only thing they do is to punch each other you just kind of lose interest and you like the punching doesn't feel like it has any meaning well i felt like it had meaning in the first one so hopefully that will change because we only have volume two and i can't lose interest yeah you know then we had the darkening with sonya mara this is another one i had just blended in my mind so i need to go and read the first sentence of the synopsis the darkening is this the one where the Prophecies, or is that the next one? No, this is a revolutionary one. Like, she, 
her parents tried to do in revolution, she failed. And now we're doing a new revolution. She's gonna cheat her way into this court and apparently I just didn't care. I did not care. I give it a one star. And then the last book cover from month was a violet made of thorns. And this one I believe was like, she can see the future, but then someone is blackmailing her to tell the wrong future to the prince. So he will not, like get together with this other woman, but then he just doesn't care about that. So she's trying to make the prince get together with this woman, but it's not happening, maybe. I guess you need to read the book to find out. And I didn't care about that one either. And again, also a one star. And that was all the books I read in July. I do feel like I I thought I read more favorite book than I feel like I talked about here, but obviously I also read them in June. But just feel like I read much more and I feel like I didn't read that many as I thought I did. But some like other random stuff in there as well. I did vlog my other reading in the month and then some of these that you haven't seen in my vlogs are for other vlogs and so I'll just pull those vlogs. But I don't know how to do raffles and vlogs at the same time. How do people do that? I don't know. Violet metal thorns, what is the emoji that fits for that? Is there a thorn emoji? Is there a flower emoji? Is this violet is a flower? If is there a purple flower? We we can go with something like that. But yeah, that is the 51 books I read in July. You should see me soon for my August wrap up, hopefully, because apparently that is like in two weeks. You should see me soon. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye!